now back on to part two of this lecture series here. What we're going to do is look at some ideas about the weight of freedom from the lower bonds of the anima and by inference, the animus. The anima was set free. The animal was set free not only by the means of cooking, it's calcinatio reference again, alchemical, but also by the sword dividing the egg or by separatio or by dissolution into the four root elements. The separatio was often represented as the dismemberment of a human body. Off, uh, uh, of the aqua permanens, it is said that it dissolved the bodies into four elements. Altogether, the divine water possessed the power of transformation. It transformed the negredo into the albedo through the miraculous washing ablutio. It animated inert matter, made the dead to rise again, and therefore possessed the virtue of the baptismal water in the ecclesiastical rite. Just as in the Benedictio Fontis, the priest made the sign of the cross over the water and so divides it into four parts, so the mercurial serpent, symbolizing the aqua permanence, undergoes dismemberment, another parallel to the division of the body. And because this is talking about um, the four elements, all right, um, we'll see in the symbol of the pentagram, and I'll throw that up there. Um, you'll see at the top of the pentagram, you'll have uh, the Hebrew letter Shin, which is fire and is also spirit, um, that it is the master of the four elements, okay? And uh, it is the fifth quintessential element and um, that it also unifies the four elements, okay? So spirit is in all aspects of all elements and is that which permeates it and gives it life, okay? So there's a, um, a footnote that I put here that says the mystery of the water here also links to the mystery of wine. There now is no wonder why wine equals yayin in Hebrew, which equals 70, and is also equivalent to sud, and sud read um, letter for letter, okay, because the, the letters can give a, uh, an interpretation, means energy of transmutation linking to desire, okay? There is truth in wine, in vino veritas, also sin serere et baco friget venus. Without Ceres, Lord of the Grain, and Bacchus, Lord of Grapes and Wine, Venus, Goddess of Desire, freezes over. So there's a little bit of a, of a formula, if you will, there in there as well on how to uh, transmutate the desires that uh, are, are, are getting in the way of your, uh, your actual calling. All right. So upon the prima materia was imposed, as it were, a fourfold structure, a cross representing the four elements, two sets of contraries, earth and air, fire and water. Psychologically, this image corresponds to the creation of the ego out of the undifferentiated concept, unconscious by the process of discriminating the four functions, which are thinking, feeling, sensation, and intuition, air, water, earth, fire, knights, queen, pages, and kings, respectively. Or not quite respectively because, uh, uh, yeah, knights, queens for water, earth is pages, kings are uh, fire. Um, and on, on the word prima materia, okay, um, Prima materia is given in relation to the fourness that is noted in the ego's relation to anima and animus, levels of integration, and also due to the importance that fourness indicates wholeness and completeness, it is a symbol of the self. So this is also the circle, okay? When you're looking at the, the pentagram um, by which fire is at the top, and actually the, the name would be, because the, the, the four elements are... Uh, uh, attributed the Hebrew alphabet Yad Heh Vah Heh, the name Yehovah. If you put 
the Hebrew letter Shin in the middle, that's Yehushua, which is the name of Jesus. Okay, that's that's a circular name. That that's the the whole man. Okay, the ver integra. So, um, anyways, um, <clears throat> so uh, uh, keep the antithesis of elements in mind here. For example, air will dry up water, but is a natural component in its composition. Fire will burn up earth, yet earth is necessary a necessary agent in the creation of fire. Earth as a body even is a uh, uh, fine can be fine like gas, you know? Um so <clears throat> we're going to continue forward here. When the alchemist speaks of Mercurius, on the face of it, he means Quicksilver or Mercury. But inwardly, he means the world-creating spirit concealed or imprisoned in matter. The dragon is probably the oldest pictorial symbol in alchemy of which we have documentary evidence. It appears as the Ouroboros, the tail eater, in the Codex Marcianus, which dates from the 10th or 11th century, together which, uh, with the legend, the one, the all. Time and again, the alchemists reiterate that the opus proceeds from the one and leads back to the one. That is a sort of circle like a dragon biting its own tail. For this reason, the opus was often called circulare, circular, or else rota, the wheel. And I'm going to link uh, Proto-Indo-European, K-W-E-L, quell, to revolve, move around, dwell. It's the, it's a, the a derivative of the word wheel and below that uh root is k-w-e-t-w-e-r quetwer which is for four okay so you see the circle linking uh even in the proto-indo-european roots which is which words act ideologically within a reasonable uh, uh mentally reasonable way that you can track them etymology will show you that and uh, uh, the circle has an idea of foreignness, you know. Um, so Mercurius stands at the beginning and the end of the work. He is the prima materia, the caput corvius, that's the head of the crow, the negredo. As dragon, he devours himself, and as dragon, he dies to rise again in the lapis, which is the stone, the stone of, of the philosophers, all right. And um, I'm going to show uh, a diagram which shows in the psyche so to speak uh it's, it's it's called the uh the the diamond archetype of the self that jung put out where you can see these levels uh, of the rotundum which is the the, the circular chaos uh, uh where you can also see where the lapis is which is the next level up um out of the lapis the serpent and then from the serpent the lesser man and then from the lesser man you have the uh, the uh, uh, the original man or greater man, and this whole uh, um, symbol that Jung put together, which it very closely resembles the the tree of life, um, is wrapped around in the shape of a serpent. And uh, you can look into the uh, the the book uh, uh, Aeon Lectures by Edward F. Edinger. And you can you can see this. Uh, you can also look in Aeon, the book Aeon itself, and then we'll talk about that. I'll maybe be making a reference to uh, the last picture that I'm going to show in this lecture, because it uh, uh, refers to something you talked about in Aeon as far as progression of time, because the four elements also represent uh, projections in time as well too. So we're going to continue on. <clears throat> He is the play of colors and the cauda pavonis, which is uh, uh, the, the tail of the, um, the uh, peacock, which is uh, relative to Ketrinitas. That's the final stage before the rebato in the alchemical work and, um, that, and the division into the four elements. Okay, so um, I'm going to I put a note here. Please recall our previous visitation of Luke 12, 49 through 53, which I'll pro possibly throw back up here on division of family unit and the incest theme, because we're going to talk about that here. Four states of the ego's relation to the anima or animus. 
Also important in this context are the different states of ego's relation to anima or animus, which is of some importance in evaluating analytic patients. I distinguish four different states, infantile state, the infantile state, the projected state, the possessed state, and the conscious state. The infantile state is the original one of symbolic mother, son, or father, daughter, incest. Uh, the second state. In the second or projected state, the anima or animus it are experienced in projection upon a member of the opposite sex. The further distinction can be made between remote and nearby projections. By remote projections, I mean such things as the adulation of movie stars and rock singers and other groupie phenomena. Uh, collective pro projection is usually participated in by a whole group and the projection carrier is not available to provide any corrective response so the projection has a sizable infantile component nearby projections get closer to home and these lead uh, one into actual life encounters in which the projected image is contrasted with the reality of the person carrying the projection that results in greater consciousness so the possessed state is what we're going to go to next enthusiasm in theos is what this could be talking about the god within possession by an archetype ego inflation is uh, another way of putting this the third stage of relation to anima slash animus i call the possessed state the animal possessed man and the animal possessed woman when a man is anima possessed, a condition that usually comes and goes with moods, he is sensitive and resentful and his feelings are very easily hurt. I would say that the key word for the anima possessed man is a resent, uh, uh, resentment, a sour, disappointed attitude. Another way of putting it would be that the anima possessed man is inappropriately soft. The anima possessed woman is quite the reverse. She is opinionated, argumentative, brittle. When the anima state is uppermost, she is inappropriately hard. <clears throat> Conscious relation to anima or animus. Finally, the fourth state would be the conscious relation to anima or animus. It, it's also wise too to, to look at the fact that through what I've just read, we've gone from the lowest anima or anima state all the way into the higher levels of, uh, of uh, progression in, in those uh, delineations of the psyche, all right? Finally, the fourth state would be the uh, conscious relation to anima or animus. At this stage of things, as Jung puts it in Collected Works 9.2 paragraph 40, anima and animus represent functions with, which filter the contents of the collective unconscious through to the, con uh, to the conscious mind. This means archetype, and this is my note here, this means archetype symbols are showing slash expressing their numinous and powerful content within your mind, and this can usually amount to a wounding of the ego. This, in one interpretation, it could be stated by his, uh, uh, his by his or the ego stripes we are healed. Christ represented the solar ego in a large way, all right? And, and it's by the wounding of the solar ego by um, chaos, if you will, coming into the, the, the idea or the way that we think things are, shaking it up, you know? Uh, uh, we can go into a depression. There, 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 there's certain uh, times of, of, uh, of great self-doubt that we can come into, but there's always some counter, um, counter pole that's set up in the unconscious that leads us back on the right path with an increased level of consciousness if if uh we're we're really consciously aware of what's going on during that state of crisis all right ego relation to anima when the ego has a conscious relation to anima or animus it is no longer subject to possession and the contrasexual element becomes a conduit by which the contents of the of the by which the contents of the collective unconscious can move from the unconscious to the ego. So crises 
being thrown into a crisis um, and being fortified by consciously relating to those situations um, and, and really by having the proper doctrine by which to understand what is actually going on can turn the unconscious into a conduit by which the conscious mind is given deeper um, reparative and, and uh, uh, really new uh, re really <clears throat> information of very 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 deep and numinous quality if you will okay attention to unconscious this conscious relation to the anima or animus leads to an attitude that gives regular attention to the unconscious so the left brain starts to turn more to the promptings of the right brain there's there's a report that's being built now okay so the ultimate goal the ultimate goal of these masculine and feminine principles which make up the syzygy is the conjunctio their union this dynamic uh the urge of the syzygy to achieve the conjunctio lives itself out in external life in a fairly typical way and um i put a note here for syzygy um, C Proto Indo European Y E U G Yug, uh, t which means to join. This is this is the root of the word syzygy, and um, it's very 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 uh, 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 a good root to look into. I'm going to put it up on the screen so that you can actually see what this root means, and maybe get some other some other connections and allusions to it, to what it means. All right, so. Um, on to the next yeah. exteriorized conjunctio <clears throat> this is what I would call the concrete or exteriorized conjunctio sequence a man and women fall in love in other words they fall into mutual anima and animus projections that stage of things is really delicious each is convinced that he or she has found a soulmate in the other and there is a blissful feeling of wholeness whenever they are together <clears throat> and in a relationship you're doing what the alchemists used to do in the laboratory which is to uh project what's going on on the inner planes onto their work and um yeah the projections are real if you take the projection back and and uh, uh, usually that happens when you realize that oh man you know the the, the experiment didn't go right i.e. me being with the person that I'm with or whatever at the you know particular time or whatever you know oh it didn't go right um and that's because they didn't live up to the projections that you made on them they were your projections you got to take them back and you got to realize that that these are ideals that maybe sometimes you don't 100% live up to and that's that 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 in in a very short gist is what shadow work is about you know taking your projections back off of the back of somebody else that that you're accusing or that you're putting down because they didn't live up to those things you know and and realizing that you know sometimes you fall short of the mark but anyways painful sense of loss on the other hand there is a very painful sense of loss when they are apart the lovers right which is uh, another illusion lovers uh tarot card number six because that, that's what the conjunctio is dealing with too. It's, it, it bears a close resemblism, uh, a resemble. It, it, it closely resembles tarot card uh, two of cups, in the lesser arcana, and and directly speaks to anima and animus and the conjunctio as well. So. Um, on the other hand, there is a very painful sense of loss when they are apart. This initial state of things, because it is largely unconscious, usually cannot last long. It generally evolves in one of three ways. First possibility. One possibility is that the concrete conjunctio proceeds in life, so there is a marriage, family, and a joint life, and the libido that has been flowing between the anima and the animus projections is progressively led into the effort of developing a concrete existence together. <clears throat> second possibility. The second possibility is that instead of a concrete conjunctio, there will be a concrete separatio. In other words, the projection drops off for one or the other. It drops off for one person and then the other is abandoned. <laughs> How many of you have been through that? <laughs> I sure have. Okay, so <laughs> the rejected one. <laughs> been there myself. 
When that happens, the rejected one is exposed to grief and despair and sometimes resorts to violence. This is the Dito phenomenon, the Medea phenomenon, the Don Jose phenomenon in Carmen. Despair or violence. <clears throat> Extremes of despair or violence are activated because one has lost one's soulmate and this is experienced as a total defeat. A failure of the possibility of conjunctio. The despair leads to destruction. Huh. In um, the... Uh, the book uh, I had, I was just reading uh, the story of Chihuantepec, uh, the Native American, um, in uh, that that one of Jung's uh, uh, patients uh, was talking about, and how he was analyzing her uh, uh, and and talking about the libido through the story of Chihuantepec uh, deals directly with this. That he he had a lot of despair and violence and. Um, the the fact that he could not find his soulmate led led to uh, his despair and eventual destruction. So that's a, a you know a, an example of that archetype. Uh, how, how, however, shortly I've I've stepped into it though. But anyways, the other person, the alternative is the realization that the other person was not the es essential thing. Then one starts to make connection with the anima or animus internally. This has been expressed as when half gods go, the half, I mean, the gods arrive, um, when, which was Ariadne's experience when Theseus abandoned her and then Dionys Dionysus arrived on the scene. The third possibility. The third possibility is that progressive development occurs in the midst of the mutual projection. The individuals gradually discover that their in loveness is based on a projection of the anima or animus. <clears throat> Conscious object love. But as a consequence of having been the carriers of that projection, they are also led to the discovery of the capacity for conscious object love. Then it becomes possible to love the partner as he or she actually is, simultaneously developing and maintaining a living connection to the inner image of the anima or animus. Now, I, I wrote a footnote here. The inner image, I believe, is superordinal or supraordinal to all outer images of anima and animus. Fact being that your relation to this image will in many ways affect your relation to the outer subsequent images that can carry the projections you make. And I have seen in intrapersonal relationships that one's understanding, mature understanding of that image can help influence the consciousness of uh, the other partner, or of their partner towards a higher ideal. So you can, it, <clears throat> by having the self-knowledge, you can influence the other person that you're with. Um, by their seeing the changes that are made within, by their uh, uh, almost magnetically being attracted towards a higher transformation themselves. One being transformed by the hard work on the inner plane by the other, if the other is receptive enough to pick it up. And that's a big key. So uh, <clears throat> next uh, section here. Very, it is very important as I can see how this relates to the various stages between page, night, king and queen in the lesser arcana okay and and, and the, the the stages of anima and animus progression so three steps of transformation i'm recapping these three intermediate steps here so we can take a look at the anima the four anima or animus level interchanges more deeply um and this is going to be on the anima because this would create a whole nother section if I was to go into the animus. And um, for that reason, if I can remember at the end of this reading, I may pull out a paper where I wrote some analogous stages, if you will, that are very analogous to these that are given here that could guide a, a female into what those steps would be on the in-between of the four animus levels of progression so um <clears throat> um there are three steps of transformation which take place in four stages at the risk of oversimplifying let me just give you a hint 
of what I see as symbolizing those three three steps. So the step between even the step between Eve and Helen is symbolized by the the abduction of Persephone by Hades. The step between Helen and Mary is symbolized by the Annunciation. The step between Mary and Sapientia is symbolized by the Assumption of Mary. So we're going to open these up. We are quickly going to go over these three in between linking steps to the four levels of anima progression as it will be valuable towards unpacking this whole idea. So between Eve and Helen of Troy stage, okay, the myth of Demeter and Persephone. The story re relates that Demeter and Persephone were strolling around in a meadow where Persephone, who was picking flowers, plucked the Narcissus, which was held to be the gateway to the underworld. The earth sprang open and Hades emerged and carried her off into his realm. Demeter, disconsolate, wandered the earth seeking her. That's her mother. <clears throat> During her absence, nothing grew. No seeds sprout, sprouted, no leaves came out, no fruit was born. Everything was sterile, and it became evident that mankind would be destroyed if Persephone did not return. So Zeus ordered it. However, a complication arose. She had eaten seven pomegranate seeds while in Hades' kingdom, and that committed her to the underworld. She had a stake in it, or it had a stake in her. Finally, a compromise was devised under which she had, I mean, she was to spend six months of the year above ground and six months underworld as the queen of Hades. Meanwhile, during her wanderings, Demeter had stopped at the little village of Eleusis, 12 miles south of Athens, where she was given hospitality by some kindly people. And in return, she had... Uh, taught her mysteries to the Eleusian, Eleusinians. Such are the bare bones of the myth. Emergence from psychic maidenhood by initial encounter with the masculine. In its most apparent psychological meanings, the myth describes a stage of feminine development, the emergence from the psychic maidenhood by way of an initial encounter with the masculine. Rested from her innocent state of daughter and partner of Demeter, her mother, right? And plunged into the darkness under the earth, Persephone was suddenly faced with the breakup of the comfortable, all-feminine matriarchal condition. As Newman uses uh, the, that term in the origin of history of consciousness, uh, pages uh, 41, etc., it was torn apart by the appearance of the new masculine principle represented by Hades. This particular image comes up not uncommonly in young women's dreams. <clears throat> death and rebirth mystery here we are looking at the myth of demeter and persephone rather specifically and as relevantly uh, relevant chiefly to women's psychology on a more general level it is to be read as a death and rebirth mystery and thus applicable to both men and women and it was in this wider aspect that it became the foundation for the Eleusinian mysteries, which existed for 1,200 years. Sworn to strictest secrecy, uh, sworn to strictest secrecy, and the secret was kept. Multitudes of people were initiated at Eleusis, including some of the most prominent people of antiquity, Augustus and Marcus Aurelius among them. The rituals were divided into two categories, the lesser mysteries and the greater mysteries. The former were, the former were performed at Agrae, a suburb of Athens, in February, approximately the time that Persephone starts coming to life in the greening of spring, and the latter were celebrated at Eleusis in September at the time when Persephone is descending into the underworld. <clears throat> Emergence or rebirth as lesser ritual, descent or death as the greater ritual. Thus, we have the curious situation that the emergence, the rebirth, was observed as the lesser ritual and the descent as the greater. We may look at the double aspect of the mysteries as corresponding to the two aspects of the psyche as we understand it. What Jung had labeled the personal unconscious and the collective unconscious. 
Dealing with the first, we know to be a lesser task and with the second, a greater task. The lesser mysteries at Agre consisted largely in purification and instruction, while the greater mysteries which required that one first go through the lesser ceremonies lasted about nine days. Further purifications and sacrifices ended in what was called the epoptia, a final visionary experience. For example, I wrote as a, a sub note, for example, in the tarot, there is the lesser arcana, which describe the trials, toils and tribulations of life and also the, joy, uh, the joyous antithesis of general life. In the lesser arcana system, there is also a deeper look that is granted as to the hidden causes of these lesser mysteries unlocked via deeper knowledge of the major arcana or greater mysteries which call for the student of the tarot to discover the visions and intricacies ver uh, um, verily the secrets underlying the interior of his physical being his or her for example the deep psyche he or she is to form a linear and connected understanding of the keys over time which acts as a tool by which he or she can pry into the most quintessential meanings and chains of symbols relating to both physical situation and the world of ideas so <clears throat> the idea of rapture as in the revelations are, applies to the myth of hades and persephone and the level of interchange between eve and helen this rapture though happens coinciding with a descent to the underworld which is the area of the rotundum at the bottom of the diamond archetype of self of cg jung i'm going to place that on the screen <clears throat> so the pro the proto-indo-european root that popped up to me while i was reading this uh is uh proto-indo-european rep rep to snatch and um, some of the words that correspond to this are rapacious, rape, rapid, rapine, rapt, ravage, raven. Um, and we'll leave them at, there, at, at that. And then it's from the Latin, repare it, to seize. And below this, we get the uh, Proto-Indo-European root, um, R-E-T, ret which is to run or roll okay and th th those are the basis of the words roll rota which is wheel rotary rotate rotund rotunda so so we have the word rotundum that comes out of this which is the very bottom of the uh, uh diamond archetype of self which i threw up on the screen and i will do so again uh, here so uh, um, again we have rotund rotunda round from Latin rotundus round and probably from rotundus rolling okay so let's continue forward so the step between Helen of Troy and the Mary stage is the Annunciation and Zeus and his lovers will be approached here to describe. We find in the image of Zeus and his lovers early forms of the same archetypal phenomenon that appears later in the Christian Annunciation, the union of divine and the human. The Annunciation, the meeting of Mary and the Holy Ghost appears to be a gentler encounter Yet, the ultimate fate of Christ, the fruit of that union, was anything but gentle. Zeus and Hera. In these myths, we have the strange phenomenon of Zeus and Hera apparently working at cross purposes. Zeus has the urge to create, to generate more and more offspring by different mothers in different places. And Hera's role is to resent and attempt to frustrate or somehow punish individuals who succumb to Zeus's desires. It is a little like what we see in the book of Job, where Yahweh is divided against himself. The other part of him appears as Satan. Here we see a certain ambiguity in the world of the archetypes, which are not necessarily interested in the comfort and well-being of the human ego. They may be more interested in something beyond the uh, ego's ability to value or understand. See, and, and, and 
it's the idea of enantiodromia um of, of one opposite to turn into the other opposite you know what i mean and opposites being part of a whole you know you can't have one thing without the other thing and usually that third thing will turn into something on a higher plane as well though too you know what i mean given the time and given the conscious application so i wrote a note here because of zeus's frolickings with all these different uh uh people within the within the myths and then hera his wife was always finding a way to curse these people and hamper his 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 plots to uh inseminate these different beings and people okay these different maidens <clears throat> so pertaining to to this step in between um um helen of troy and mary okay think of the back and forth relationships you have been in in your life okay if this applies to you which were a result of you projecting your animal values on a woman in animal form that's what a woman is right think of the trouble of keeping a relationship together as if the garden of eden was reattainable if you will via this pursuit think of the growth the inner growth and realizations that may have come by way of the past or ongoing conflict this is one instance of how the outer projected state of the inner urge to conjunction of opposites can work towards learning about the inner if you can think through this because uh uh just 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 the the uh th 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 this state being a state where people are in their youth growing into you know maybe a middle age you know but this is more like you know younger age you know being out out and about being full of life and vigor finding suitors uh different women if you will you know what i mean and and uh you know um in in having failed relationships and then the different things that occur during these these failed relationships they, there's things that you learn about yourself there's things that you learn about the opposite sex and in learning about yourself and learning about the opposite sex you're actually learning about what's what's going on inside of you but it, it happens in a state where because at that time in your life you're probably uh haven't done any shadow work you haven't resolved any of uh the 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 negativity with inside of yourself you you basically look at it as the opposite sex is fault and you look at yourself as holier than the 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 feminine vessel that you projected all these expectations on you know and that that couldn't live up to your outrageous outlandish uh projections at the end of the day so just something to think about um the proto-indo-european root that i uh posited for this one that popped up in my head was any you which means to shout and it's the the root of the word announce or also enunciation okay um which uh uh deals with a messenger also a message uh being brought to an individual okay but i but before we get to any you to shout and we've already done it so let's continue before that comes up you have uh words uh word roots like n-e-r to man basic sense vigorous vital strong which is which is the idea of zeus you know what i mean um you have uh, uh the word the word or the idea of man that comes from there um uh let's see did it, did it, did it. to return safely home the idea of harness the word harness nostalgia uh from greek nostos a return home um let's see what else we have here um the word uh word root nes which is uh, where we get the word ours or R or the word um, pater noster, which is our father. You know what I mean? Um, Zeus is the all father. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's amazing how um, Proto-Indo-European roots, like I said, etymology will unearth some things that uh, are, are, you know, buried even within the, the, the psyche. It will basically create links 
because that's what the logos does it, it it's it's a collective of images of words etc and that's that's what we're doing here okay so after any u to shout is any w n which is for the word nine and um you get all aspects of the word nine there um nine ninetieth ninth november um the idea of the ennead so the the group of egyptian gods uh uh the first egyptian gods if you will the enneagram which is a a, a very very amazing tool um to know oneself by and to know others by as well the two and in a way it's kind of saying I, to to me this kind of says that there's a state of newness that comes in there, there there's a state of of uh of um wholeness that comes in nine is actually equivalent to one but nine is a feminine and lunar number so after like once you get into the stage of mary right and and this this whole idea of zeus and hera um talks about that you know once you get into that next state there's a deeper understanding of oneself and also others that comes along with that and the enneagram is a tool by which that is done and then also too it, it's nine which is representative of the lunar unconscious but nine actually equals one and um there's a pretty cool exercise you can do to prove that and um it is to um basically let me see um you can basically take a number like let's say uh two let's say 290 right or 291 9 10 11 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 basically basically multiplying certain numbers and then cross adding them will give you nine again. You know what I mean? Nine will ever produce itself basically. I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole and it looks like I've already done like I've already done it. It's, it, it, it's almost it's almost two AM over here, forgive me. So let's get to the next stage, which is between Mary and Sapientia, okay? So Assumption of the Virgin Mary. So the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. The Assumption of the Virgin Mary is a dogma of the church where the, where the Christian version of the mother archetype is personified by, by the Virgin Mary. So this is the next step up um, in the stages that we have just passed. And keep in mind, these are between stages fitting like this. Okay, so um, we're at this stage right here. Because this is between Helen of Troy and the and and the, the the state of Mary. The next one will be Mary and Sapientia, which is uh yeah between Mary and Sapientia stage. So we're here at this one now. Okay. The Christian Queen of Heaven has obviously shed all her Olympian qualities except for her brightness, goodness, and eternality, and even her human body. The thing most prone to gross material corruption has put on ethereal incorruptibility so isis and simile is what we're going to talk about here the rich varied allegories of the mother of god have nevertheless retained some connection with her pagan prefiguration in eyes in isis io and simile not only are Isis and the Horus child iconological exemplars, the Virgin Mary and her child, but the ascension of Semele, the original mortal mother of Dionysus, likewise anticipates the assumption of the Blessed Virgin. Further, this son of Semele, Dionysus, is a dying and resurging god and the youngest of the Olympians. Semele herself seems to have been an earth goddess, just as the Virgin Mary is the earth from which Christ was born. The assumption as a deliberate counterstroke. Her assumption was act, has actually been interpreted as a deliberate counterstroke 
to the materialistic di doctrinarism that provoked the Catholic powers into revolt. Just as Christ's appearance in his own day created a real devil and adversary of God out of what was originally a sun dwelling in heaven, so now, conversely, a heavenly figure, the Virgin Mary, has split off from her original Catholic, Catholic realm and taken up a counter position to the, tit uh, the titanic forces of the earth and the underworld that have been unleashed. In the same way that the mother of God was divested of all the essential qualities of materiality, matter became completely desold and this at a time when physics is pushing forward to insights which, if they do not exactly dematerialize matter, at least endue it with properties of its own and make its relation to the psyche a problem that can no longer be shelved. The assumption understood concretely. Understood concretely, the assumption is the absolute opposite of materialism. Taken in this sense, is a counterstroke that does nothing to diminish the tension between the opposites but drives it to extremes. The assumption understood symbolically. Understood symbolically, however, the assumption of the body is a recognition and acknowledgement of matter, which in the last resort was identified with evil only because of an overwhelmingly pneumatic tendency in man. In themselves, Spirit and matter are neutral, or rather, utriusque capex, that is, capable of what man calls good or evil. The dogma of the assumption proclaimed in an age of suffering from the greatest political schism history has ever known, 1950, is a compensating symbol that reflects the strivings of science for a uniform world picture. So in respect to the assumption, notice the word root L, which corresponds to the name Al, which is a name associated with Jupiter slash Zeus via the correspondence in, Kabbalah, in the Kabbalah via Sephiroth number four. L, it, L means, as far as the Proto-Indo-European root means, elbow or forearm. And... Um, the, the exact route that I want to talk about in respects to what we just got done reading, okay, is uh, Proto-Indo-European root E-M, M, to take or distribute, okay, and uh, some of the key words here are exempt, ransom, redeem, redemption, and assume, which would lead to assumption, okay, so... Um, the following diagrams are entered in order to show the relation of the ego self axis to the court cards of the tarot. So this is basically going to show something about the ego self axis and, and basically how it relates to the four levels of anima and animus progression. Because um, the, on the lowest level, you're dealing with a purely, purely infantile ego. Or, or, or purely infantile state, should I say, rather. And uh, uh, on the ego self-axis, it shows that. And um, on the more mature side, so like going higher into the levels of development, on the, mature, on the more mature side, you're seeing um, uh, a will to reintegrate back into the state from which one came when they were in, in infancy which was in conflation with the self, but they didn't, they, during that conflation with the self in, in, in infancy and in, in a very, very early childhood, you don't have the ego or the egoic consciousness, if you will, to relate to the self at that point in time. You know, you're just a, a pure consciousness, you know what I mean? Um, and, and, and that's pro possibly, quite possibly why um, the Christ, for instance, uh, the symbol of the Christ is the child. The symbol of uh, of, of uh, I, I'm from from what I remember, um, the Buddha could even be the child. Um, um, Harpocrates, as uh, identified with Kether or God, is shown, or the self, if you will, is shown as a child doing this. You know, 
holding the secrecy you know it's a it's a it's a it's a symbol of uh, of holy silence which shows reverence you know what i mean reverence for the secret so anyways um the following diagrams are entered in order to show the relation of the ego self axis to the court cards of the tarot on ego self axis edward edinger has summarized jung's formulation as followed the self is the ordering and unifying center of the total psyche conscious and unconscious just as the ego is the center of the conscious personality the current working for formula is first half of life is ego self separation second half of life is ego self reunion so you can see the lower aspects of anima and animus linking to higher aspects when in the beginning you know before you know the 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 ego self separation and and being acquainted with the ego it was always conflated with the higher aspects so anyways the process of alternation between ego self union and ego self separation seems to occur repeatedly throughout the life of the individual both in childhood and maturity indeed this cyclical or better spiral formula seems to express the basic process of psychological development from birth to death and that's Ed, uh, edward f edinger in ego and archetype pages three through five Traumatic experiences here represented by the experiential state image overwhelm the ego. It is as if the traumatic injuries are 220 plus voltage and the first half of life ego is only wired for 110 volts. The ego symbolically gets shocked and knocked out of the boat and drowns. During this unconscious to ego phase of the episode, something of the experience comes in lodges in the body in total psyche now separate from ego consciousness back to the container problem how can the 110 wired ego relate to the 220 plus voltage trauma episode how might we understand the impact and long term long-term effect on individual development in the service of re recovering wholeness the ego is challenged to open to the return to open to the return of the repressed in view of the ego's 110 voltage wiring and the 220 plus capacity of deeper consciousness opening to the self is experienced as death to the ego and during this quest it helps to know the symbols and this is my note and during the quest it helps to know the symbols of the archetypes and to also have a map by which you can chart your experiences along the way lest you be lost in the labyrinth and overtaken by the minotaur so to speak we read about that earlier the great occultist alistair crowley with his version and dissemination of the kabbalah did so via tables of correspondences so that his initiates of his system could be assured of the results of their work and anchor their experiences to the measured expectations of their initiatory grades okay so that that, that that's something that is uh it's really good to think about um having some system in place by which you can measure what experience you come you've come into and and and, and to know the system so that you can say like yes i i for sure have had that experience um and you know you know you know you know what that experience means you know what i mean uh, um it helps to and i use the word a lot and it's a, it's a great word to catalyze the experience to bring to bring it into a, a faster possibly and a more sure fruition so Continuing forward, I am going to uh, put up the uh, C.G. Jung process of individuation. The ego becomes conscious of itself, followed by awareness of the separate self. And um, each of these stages, there's four stages in this picture, and I'm going to put this exact picture up, that do, duly, correspond to page, knight, queen, and king and the four levels of uh, anima slash animus development all right so continuing forward here so talking about that wounded defeat okay that wounding defeat uh, uh that shock to the ego 
and uh, uh, the reinstatement, if you will, okay? So a pre-notation, as we go, and actually, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna refer to this drawing first because this drawing is gonna open up what I'm talking about here. And it, it actually, this drawing actually comprises the full understanding of these four level of anima, animus uh, uh, situation of, of progression. It, it uh, give me a second. <coughs> this, uh, uh, this drawing fully explains uh, in, in a very nice pictorial understanding, if you understood, and I'm going to, to, to bring understanding to this, of the levels of anima slash animus progression, and also how it, yeah, the encounter with the self along the way in this situation, it seems like a, a blow to the ego, but that blow has to be taken consciously and has and, and you have to, to grow through the pain, if you will, in order to come to a state of individuation or self-initiation, right? So uh, um, a drawing from 12th century manus manuscript, Hortus Delic Delicarium, the Garden of Delights, compiled by Herod of Landsberg as a depiction of the psychological and spiritual opus. Okay. Uh, pre notation as we go through the levels of animus slash anima progression, and as a prerequisite, are undertaking shadow work and living as authentically as possible so as to genu genuinely acquire the gifts of the work authentically. We will find that as we encounter the self in the depths, it is through pain and suffering that the growth is made very concrete. It is not that joy and happiness do not play their part, but more so in the way E.F. Edinger put it in Mystery of Conjunctio, and I'm paraphrasing, that love and strife are the methods that the Conjunctio urge is constellated towards its completion. And oft times, strife is a better unifier towards that goal than love. I am citing this section to give a greater understanding of that aspect as it leads to an irreplicable stain of individuality and growth. You know, and we want to be stained by the individuality and growth. We want to carry the marks of, of a, uh, a survivor and of an overcomer and um, have authentic, you know, characters. You know, that, that, that's what the individuation process is about, going through the fires and trials of life and coming out with a victor story, rising like a phoenix from the ashes of the fire. You know what I'm saying? From its own ashes, if you will. You know what I mean? And um, it, amazingly, yet, even in the story of the phoenix rising from its own ashes, um, it ends up going, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, to some temple in Alexandria, Egypt, right? Um, and uh, when it's in this temple, there's a priest that's waiting for the, the phoenix to get there. And the phoenix willingly allows this priest to, you know, set the funeral pyre for it. It, it, it goes into the flames. It's burnt up. And uh, it, 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 it first starts as a worm and comes into, back into the form of the phoenix, rise, renewed from the flames and from its own ashes, you know. But this is, this is an alchemical allusion to the whole process of mortificatio through, uh, um, or the negredo rather, through the uh, rebato stage, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's uh uh it's it's definitely a story that's reiterated in um stories of dying and rising gods and th these stories are stories of our own psychic growth and uh of our own spirituality they're, they're they're at the they're at the core of our beings as a story that's playing itself out if you're conscious enough to have the eyes to see so um the wounding defeat encounters with the unconscious is almost by definition a wounding defeat. In Mysterium Conjunctionis, we find one of the most important sentences that Jung ever wrote. The experience of the self is always a defeat for the ego. And in other works, 
Jung writes, the integration of contents that were always unconscious and projected involves a serious lesion of the ego. Alchemical, I mean, alchemically expresses, uh, alchemy expresses this through the symbols of death, mutilation, or poisoning, or through the curious idea of dropsy. Lesion of the ego. The lesion of the ego is what is symbolized by the figure of the sun hero who is lame or has an amputated extremity. It is the meaning of Jason as a mono sandalos who has lost a sandal while carrying an unknown woman, Hera, across the river. It is also the meaning of Oedipus whose name means swollen foot. I once dreamed that while Jung was giving a brilliant lecture, I noticed that his right foot was lame. That's Ed, 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 Edward F. Edinger's uh, words right there on the lesion of the ego. It is as if the healer, and this is my note here, it is as if the healer, in order to gain his effective power, must be poisoned and wounded himself first. And, and, and that cure is extracted from the poison. It's the same way in which if you're bitten by a serpent, the antidote that's given is made from the poison of the serpent. Something to think about. Okay, so this idea of the lesion of the ego is seen here pictorially, finally, and shares the allusion in the scripture to this motif of wounding and overcoming through a wound in the words spoken to the serpent in the expulsion of Adam and Eve uh, by Jehovah in the garden. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise its heel. And that, that, that was the idea of Christ overcoming the, uh, the devil and death, etc. But, you know, he, he had to go through all the suffering in order to get to that part, which is, uh, once again, the idea of mortificatio uh, and a, a really mortificatio and conjunctio. Um, basically overcoming through death, you know what I mean? And, and, and rebirth, etc. you know what I mean? So anyways, in this picture, God uses Jesus Christ, human nature as bait to fish for the sea monster, Leviathan. The fishing line is comprised of several patriarchs and prophets resembling a Jesse tree. Jesus Christ position at the end of the hook is crucified on the cross, which serves as a, as bait that Leviathan is to swallow. His jaw is then pierced by the hook. For centuries, traditional Christian exegesis has understood the story of Job as a prefiguring of Christ who suffers and is redeemed. Also, Jonah, which I'm going to read right here as well, too. Um, the archetype of Job is what we are psychically living out when we go through the negredo, the first step in alchemy, which leads to the albedo or light. So in other words, the self uses the logos, which is an animus idea, and human nature, which is the anima, and also chaos, which is the anima, in order to draw out chaos, which is the anima, right? And this is revealed to us as a ladder of redemption, via the various archetypes that the self uses to close it, clothe itself with so as to perform the redemptive work of revealing the work to be done within the psyche which the various anima and animus levels represent. These are revealed in the pictures of the saints which also have feast dates that are aligned with archetypal astrological meanings aligned with their supposed characters. And this is, of course, possible, the understanding, only if the ego is conscious enough and equipped well enough to understand the message of the logos and its symbols by which it conveys manifold meaning to the unconscious that is looped back to a hopefully adequate, adequately prepared ego. Job had a descent into the unconscious and came out of it increased far more than what he uh, had first, uh, far more than when he had first made the dive into the unconscious or the, the uh, chaotic negredo, right? Jonah also had this same type of descent occur after the incident with the whale and became the vessel of salvation to the Babylonian Gentiles in Nineveh. 
Jonah representing the dove, Logos, for his name means dove, and the whale, Dad Gadul, representing Leviathan or Chaos, which is an anima figure also as well. This theory in the lines aforementioned of God using the Christ as bait is not so far-fetched or so cruel when it leads to a sacrifice that is better for the whole. And this is how a mature psyche would view its own sacrifice and is a scriptural theory. So thus, it is archetypal. So Romans 8, 18, 23. I'm going to read this real quick because it speaks about what we just got done talking about in scriptural form for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of god for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And that word liberty, liberty is Proto-Indo-European L-E-U-B-H, which uh, deals with love, but also is the root of the word liberty and um, libertas and uh, uh, no liber and liberas are gods or energies that, you know, you might want to look up. I might throw a little something on the screen if there's still time but uh i don't want to divert too much attention from what is about to be shown here so we might do it we might not okay so for we know that the whole creation groaneth and tra travaileth in pain together until now together think about that and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body, assumption, the, uh, um, the transfiguration, if you will, the resurrection, right? And then Isaiah 53, 10 through 12, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, to bruise who? To bruise, to bruise his son. He hath put him to grief. When, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Remember that word soul pertains to anima, all right? He shall see a travail of his soul, anima, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. And the word justify, justice, right? Uh, we were just looking at that earlier. For he shall bear their iniquities. And um, therefore will I divide him a portion. Proto-Indo-European root EM to take distribute, which was assumption. The assumption, which is also resurrection. Therefore, I will divide a portion. Uh, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul anima unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Now, the image on screen should make a little bit more sense, all right? And I'm going to speak about some uh, quick annotations to this picture and we're gonna wrap this one up, all right? So in the upper left, the upper left hand corner, the individual with the fishing rod is the higher self or God as the motive. Also as wanting it, the one or the self or the God wanting experience through all forms of creation and is getting the experience through all forms of creation to know all things through all bodies, forms to which it is attached, it being the self or God, you know, because it, it, it's God is neither male or females above that. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and what what that knowledge of all things is, is is uh, um, we can go to the Proto-Indo-European root for that, actually. And it's it, it it's 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 a Gnostic knowledge you know and 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 the knowledge of the gnostics 
and the knowledge that the Gnostics actually put out there leads you to that inner sanctum which the higher animus figure represents in this picture as the self or God as the motive, all right? So now you see that the, the, the fishing rod that he has with the patriarch's faces on him, right? That's the higher anima, all right? And I wrote a note on the side of this saying, this is the unconscious as containing the archetypal energies and qualities of every form that exists. Yet on the highest level, also these are the various forms by which the one incarnates in the psyche within the unconscious all the way down to effect, effects, E-F-F-E-C-T-S, and forms on the physical plane, which bear their archetypal in, imprints by which we can know from whence they originate. Remember that all the patriarchs here are in the service of the mother, okay? The Virgin Mary, right? The, the, the Roman Catholic Church was there before the Christian Church came onto the scene. So when you look at older pictures like this, understand from what, what ideation they come out of. You know what I mean? So anyways, um, the, two, the two levels that we just touched on correspond to the... So the higher animus, self or God as the motive in the upper left-hand corner corresponds to the wands, Okay. That's, and it also corresponds to a time or an age, the age of the fathers, the age of the patriarchs, all right? Now you have the higher anima um, or the unconscious, as I've termed it here, corresponding to uh, the hearts or the cups, um, which is uh, the higher anima figure, all right? And this leads to... Um, the age of the sun, which is typified by Christ on the cross here. And, and that's that's basically the last in line. That's the last in line, according to the Christian dogma. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, the lower animus is what this this would prefigure. Uh, it's it's basically um, the swords or the spades. OK, in the in the the suits of the tarot deck meaning that this would correspond to the court cards that we're using to look at this situation as well too okay this is the word made flesh the, the exact word made flesh that dwelt among us you know what i'm saying the word uh by which all things were made and and without which no things were made that were made it, it, it is that word that within it we have our movement and our being you see what i'm saying so it's active right the word made flesh, the form of the archetype in its experiential aspect, man created in the image of God held in between the realms of archetypal and physical, thus directly affected by the pooling of opposites, which either destroys him or her, thus the devouring mother or father aspect of chaos wins in that case, right, if, it, if that person is destroyed or he or she rises above and through the chaotic aspects of the mother or father as a conqueror chaos is then ordered okay and 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 that and that's what the hero which is the the, the swords uh, uh uh character or the knight if you will um the 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 one that we just talked about before this as far as the the patriarchs are concerned here the uh, uh the higher anima here is uh uh um the queen the higher animus self or god is the king all right so we get to leviathan here which is pentacles right now that's the lower anima okay this is the physical body and its desires as a devouring aspect or in the risky nature of this the picture the depiction as an as a necessary element of danger by which after one lures he or she cuts open this this fish, if you will, and appropriates the parts to amazing ends of usage, such as in the creation myth of the Aztecs, Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl rather, and Tez, Tezcatlipoca versus Sipactli, the dragon or crocodile of chaos, are 
very very closely intimated here also much like the story of marduk and tiamat which is is well known because of uh dr jordan peterson eschatologically this fish becomes the banquet and clothing of the righteous in the last day you know and um that kind of goes back to um the the statement that in the end times in in the times of the revelation in the time of the coming of christ or the coming the return of christ if you will that people will receive um that which they have done in the body you know uh karmically if you will or you know by being cast into hell if you will you know and this is dogmatic but I'm speaking of it in a symbolic way, you know what I mean? And on the lower levels of the anima, life is a living hell. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're visited with your karma a lot of times almost instantly. You know what I mean? Um, and, and once again, this level corresponds to um, the, pin the, the, the pinnacles or, or, uh, in, in a tarot deck, um, the pages, the spades. I mean, not the spades, the uh, diamonds, if you will and it's a the, it's a lower anima figure and this this corresponds also you got to keep in mind to the age of the holy spirit you have the age of the father as the higher animus the lower animus and we could we might be able to include the higher anima aspect there as uh the age of the the son because the patriarchs are included in 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 these images from the unconscious right the age of the son then you have the age of the Holy Spirit being represented possibly as the lower anima in this picture. And the age of the Holy Spirit is also the time of Aquarius, the water bearer. All right. And Leviathan is a creature of water. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's 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 just something to think about in terms of eschatology um where we're at we're, we're we're in we're in the time of the holy spirit we're in the time of aquarius where the outpouring of all of this uh, uh, uh numinous symbology this numinous outpouring is is coming into us but the thing is, is we have to rise on these planes higher and 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 cleanse ourselves really um because the, the, the Lado, if you will, the Lado, the body has to be cleansed in order to become a vessel of the receipt of the Holy Spirit. That's that that's even an, an alchemical idea, you know, so that so there must be a, a washing. You, you, you have to make uh, 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 you have to widen before you redden is, is an alchemical idea as well, though, too. There has to be um, an ablutio, an ablution. A washing before we can get into the reddening um, or the finishing of the work you know that's why the the symbolism also the rose cross is both red and white and it's a matter of really uh, uh, integrating and understanding the shadow understanding your your faultiness my faultiness how, how and, and and also understanding not just so much in a moralistic way how we're faulty and yada 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 and oh we just have to be person perfect angels no no we got to know how to flip that switch on and off uh dr peterson uh, uh jordan peterson talks a lot about the shadow integration and how we have to 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 own these things you know what i'm saying we have to own these aspects of our nature and understand that uh they're necessary they have they have the negative even has some positive aspects in it though but um, we see how the creation was subject to frustration in hopes of he that created it, you see. Um, there, there's a plan in all of this. Uh, I, I remember when I was younger, looking at my life through all the things that I had gone through, having friends die, uh, you know, uh, go, going through violence in the streets, you know, when I was younger and uh, just just having having a hard up upbringing. Um, thinking to myself that, you know, I, I, I didn't ask for this, man. I didn't even ask to be alive, being mad at life, being mad at my parents, being mad at the givers of life to me um, because I didn't see any any reason for the plan. That, that was on a definitely out of a, a lower animus. Um, 
mode of thinking you know what i mean uh, uh that that was definitely uh me being devoured you know being devoured by by uh hidden aspects of my uh, of my my psyche my anima projecting these things on other people everybody else was the was the problem not me you know but uh over time through certain development i was able to come to some better conclusion but so to some better ideas you know and uh that's that's why i'm putting this out here amongst the public here hopefully you guys uh have been enriched by uh this installation of these lectures and um what i'm gonna do is close down and um tomorrow work on this edit work on getting this out to you guys and then um i'm really thinking the next um lecture information that i'll be putting out here towards you guys is uh are, are, are some of some of strictly my own 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 writing is instead of uh, uh, annotating some things that I've been getting off the internet though, but I really felt it very important to go back over the idea of anima and animus as they're really, really key uh, situations that deal with the, 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 the great work, that deal with the opus of, of bringing yourself through these, these levels of anima and animus into uh, 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 the 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 light of the self, you know what I'm saying, and and, and, re and really understanding how to um, um, semi integrate these things. You can't you can't fully integrate uh, an archetype, but the thing is though is is uh, this video. I, I really wanted to make sure that in, in this lecture to uh, also give a, a tool, maybe maybe a, a hint to to some illusion on how we could use. Some tool that's already out there. Something that's been used as uh, a simple game to play gym, gin, rummy, and gamble to make a system out of it by which we can really start looking at our own inner procedures as far as these four levels of animus and anima integration. And also be able, because psychology is not just something that deals with you yourself, you and somebody you have a relationship with, whether that's a friend, family member, uh, uh, significant other, lover, whatever. Um, and also too, with many different people, you know, you have the, 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 the first, the, the first you dealing with you, your contrasexual image, dealing with you and another person, dealing with also a group. You can typify groups with this system as well though too. So. Um, just some things to think about and uh, hopefully you've been enriched by this uh, message here and uh, if you have please give a like please give a subscribe please uh, share this uh, to friends of yours or whatever I'm really trying my best to uh, break into a, a higher level of viewership a higher level of, uh, of uh, status on YouTube not to, uh, uh, to supply my ego with any fuel for a fire that's going to burn my personal house down, if you understand what I'm saying, but so that individuals can be helped. I feel like if one person has listened to this video and has gained something from even listening to five minutes of something spoken here, and if they forget it that day, and if somehow... The unconscious heard it and brings it up to them and they remember it if they only remembered three minutes of that five minutes and it's something that allows them to break into a deeper level of of uh of uh being you know that i've done my job i've done my job and and um i'm not an evangelist i'm not a uh neither was you neither were, were, were any analytic psychologists i'm not an analytic psychologist i'm a uh, uh, um, an open, free thinker that likes to delve into various uh, forms of spirituality and, and glean understanding that I glean via the uh, the systematic knowledge that I have have uh, uh, have internalized that allows me to see how it pertains to the the great work of of bringing myself. Or bringing my egoic consciousness into proximity to, to an understanding of the self which can never fully be done can never fully be done the closer you get to the light the fur the further away from it you you begin to realize that you are but 
I, I, I uh, endeavor to continue to put out information that will allow individuals to come closer. And um, it's definitely not about me at the end of the day. It's about uh, really enriching others' lives, really seeing others get better, uh, really uh, actually focusing others as well, though, too, including myself as, as I, I do the best that I can daily to look at the poison inside of me look at the 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 negative if you will inside of me and see that in that poison lies the cure in that pure prima materia that base raw matter mercury if you will mercurius the uniter of opposites is also there so uh i end this video with that last statement and uh like subscribe share Please help me reach uh, uh, some goals of actually getting this to being a, a platform that makes great change in people's lives uh, and uh, makes it an existential uh, situation. Thank you very much for listening and uh, for your time. Have a good night. Have a great day. Have a great afternoon wherever you are in the world. Thank you once again.